uh, dear audience, uh, let me welcome you here. Uh, this interview is part of the Czech Dead Film Movie Festival. Czech Dead Film is annually organized by Czech centers in collaboration with Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Czech Republic. Uh, it has its 10th uh, edition this year and are unfortunately we are online again due to the COVID-19 uh, situation in the world. But we are happy that we can introduce you uh, Czech filmmakers and directors unless through these short question and answers. Uh, I'm here today with the director of uh, the movie uh, The Great part three, uh, Martin Kopp, welcome. Hi. <laughs> and I would like to start just with the short information that uh, this is this movie is a third part of the Grapes trilogy, but it easily works as a one movie itself because there was a long uh, gap between uh, third, uh, first, second, and then the third part. It was longer than 10 years, so there is no problem if you didn't watch the first and second part of this movie. So let's get started with a few questions. Uh, Martin, how is it to jump into already working group of actors who already worked together on the first and second part? And uh, like, uh, did you hear something like uh, the first director or the second director would do it in a different way? Well, actually not, actually not. Maybe it was said, but I wasn't nearby, so I, I didn't hear it. <laughs> actually, actually, I didn't. Um, like the first question, um, as you said, the gap uh, was pretty, pretty huge. It was, I would say, 11 years. And um, the, the key thing was that I, I knew uh, those actors already before and um, I, with some of them I worked already and um, some of them I just, uh, I just knew personally. And uh, so they sort of, let's say, knew what to expect of me and how I'm working and uh, what, was, what was my uh, vision of the whole, let's say, um, project. So, they sort of knew what, what to expect and, and, and uh, everything went well, even though uh, you have to somehow, let's say, make the film, uh, let's say a bit similar because it's a, it's a brand, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty popular brand here in Czech Republic. So you sort of have to make it a bit similar at least a bit similar to the part one and to the part two. So I suppose you needed to watch it before the part one and part two. How many times did you watch Grapes part one and part two? <laughs> well, I don't know the exact number, but um, <laughs> uh, I really like uh, part one. Uh, so uh, I've seen it many times. Part two is more, let's say, like in a crazy comedy style and part one is more like poetic uh, mm -hmm. in a, uh, I mean in a way of uh, the, the visual style and the, the, the script writing. Uh, so as I said, I prefer part one. I, I've seen part one um, like uh, more times uh, than part two, but like both of those uh, parts I've seen many times. I, I had to. I, I had to. <laughs> so you were more inspired with the part one of the movie? I was, I was. And when, when we were, let's say, uh, thinking of uh, how to do the part three and which way we're going to go, uh, we all, uh, I mean, myself, uh, Tomáš Vitsan, the, the producer of... Uh, the all three parts, um, then the script writers, uh, Tomáš Vávra and Matý Podzimek, we all decided to go this part one way uh, because we, we, we all think or thought and also think uh, 
in present that uh, it's more say capable to this uh, to this genre and to this story to this to this area where where it takes place. I mean I mean uh, southern Moravia. Uh, so this this poetic style is let's say uh, like you know fits into the to the to the whole whole things around. Uh, it leads me to my next question. Does the movie have to be more drama or more comedy? Um, it's, I would say it's more comedy, but um, it has a drama parts. Um, but in general, I would say it's more comedy. Okay. There, there, is, a, there is a romance also. Um, so it's, it's sort of a style crossover. Which which is pretty pretty common nowadays. Um, you 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 if you if you go to a cinema, you want to laugh, you want to be touched, you know, uh, you want to let's say uh, live as many emotions as it as it possible, uh, and that's what we that's what we uh, try to do. <laughs> Yeah, I have to agree. It's harder and harder to say like this movie is a comedy and this movie is drama or thriller or whatever. So I have to agree. Uh, let me ask you about uh, Václav Postranecký. He died shortly uh, before you were about to start the shooting of the third part. And in the first and second part, he has quite an impo important role. He was one of the main characters, uh, Clara's father. Uh, but when we watched the movie we can hear his voice in the movie so how did it happen that you already uh, had these voice uh, voice recordings ready yeah um, yeah as, as you said Václav Stranecký was uh, was uh, one of the main characters of part one and part two um, uh, but uh, we knew that he's he's uh, he he was uh, seriously ill and his his health conditions were getting worse and worse uh and it was uh, it was let's say obvious that uh he could he couldn't make it uh and uh we were still in uh pre-production and the shooting was still ahead of us and uh Václav was uh uh not doing well uh but we we really wanted uh have him in and uh that's why we decided to let's say change the story rewrite the story uh so we we made his uh his character uh, already dead in a story but he left his daughter um, a tape with his narration of a let's say a list of advices and mm -hmm. so he was let's say a, a mentor for uh, Clara for his daughter you know how to make wine and um, it was also not just you know advices how to make wine and um, uh, but but also how to live and um, uh, when when she's uh, sad or you know having some some troubles, she she's uh, playing this tape, uh, and uh, this this all uh, with uh, uh, with knowing this Václav's conditions uh, became a pretty pretty emotional uh, uh, parts of of this movie and. Uh, Unfortunately, we we were right, and Václav passed out before we started shooting. But we already had this voiceover, and uh, it's still uh, a bit emotional for me now because he was a friend of mine. Uh, his son is a, a friend of mine, and um, yeah, it was it was pretty sad and uh, pretty emotional. But uh, I'm pretty happy that it was his uh, last let's say uh, acting opportunity 
he really wants to do it. He really wants to be part of it, uh, at least this way. And uh, I'm happy we, uh, we did it. And uh, he's in a movie, even though it's just uh, his voice. Yes, so you answered my uh, next question already because I wanted to ask if you needed to make changes in the script after he uh, passed away or it was already done. So you said that you knew it, that his condition is not well uh, already. So it wasn't planned for him to be in the movie already because you knew that his condition will not allow him to be there. Yeah, to, 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 to go through the shooting process, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, pretty hard, even, the, even though you try to, to make the set conditions uh, as uh, pleasant as possible for him, uh, even though it was, uh, it was impossible for him to, to go through it. And uh, unfortunately, the, he, he died before. We, yeah. we started. Yeah, that's true. So uh, something more positive. <laughs> But you said that the shooting itself, it's hard. So I think we know it. <laughs> And uh, Teresa Ramba, the main actor, uh, Clara, she was pregnant in real life when you were shooting the movie. Uh, the pregnancy was intentional part of the movie, of the script, or it just happened, she was pregnant, so you said, okay, the main character could be pregnant too, or have to be pregnant too. Well, actually, it just happened, and uh, that's, that's the thing, you know, uh, filming is a, let's say, a living process, and I don't know how to say it correctly, but uh, uh, one, one life went out, one life went in uh so uh there was a there was this uh this problem like problem with uh Václav Postranecký and there was another uh let's say a bit different problem with Teresa that he he became pregnant and um uh, then uh we were let's say uh have to decide whether we put it in, you know, this, this pregnancy, we add it into a script or we postpone the shooting for, let's say a year, maybe more. And uh, we, we didn't want it to postpone shooting for, cause, cause we were basically prepared. And so we started to think uh, how, to, uh, how, to, how to add it into a, into a script, this pregnancy part and, um, uh, we sort of uh, started to realize that it in many ways might be a, a big advantage. Um, so we did it. Uh, I think in, in many, many ways, it's really uh, a huge advantage to have uh, such a great actress as Teresa Ramba is uh, during her pregnancy. Uh, it, it was actually, I would say, seventh month of a preg pregnancy. So uh, it wasn't easy for her to to go through the shooting process. And, and she's uh, one of the main roles. So she was uh, almost every day, you know, had to shoot. But she's such a great actress. She's, she's such a great person that she, she you know, she, she took it like... Uh, That's the way it is, and um, she she didn't uh, you know worry about doing uh, things before a camera. Uh, so she's basically every time you see her in, she's doing something. You know, she's working, you know. She's she's uh, she's like living normal life, normal working life, and that's one of the you know. Uh, It's one of those advantages I, I didn't expect that, that this gonna happen. And actually, that's one of the, let's say, coolest things um, on a film, uh, like Great Part, Grace Part 3, uh, that I, I didn't expect that this gonna happen. And 
it's there. Like this, this, this pregnant uh, girl doing uh, doing normal life things, working as as uh, as she she would be in a normal conditions, and it's it's actually pretty great. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty happy for that. Yeah, I think it worked quite well. You were just a bit limited with the time, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> you had to finish the movie <laughs> before she gave the birth to her son, but you did it and it looked le really natural in the movie, I would say. Thank you. I think <laughs> and uh, am I right that you personally played uh, a little role in the movie too? Uh, yes, you are. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say played, but I'm I'm there. <laughs> and what do you do or play there? I'm not sure if uh, our viewers uh, like uh, saw you or you know that they realized that it's you when they were watching the movie. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, I'm 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 uh, uh, one of the our. It's not like a prisoner, but if you if you you know do some small crime, uh, some uh, forced works or something. Yeah, that's like. the word. Yeah, so I'm I'm like in a group of forced workers, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's uh, that that would be I I would I guess another question whether it is uh, let's say uh, a common uh, in my films that that I'm I'm playing those small parts so that, that was just just that's 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 the thing that that's uh, that's what i'm doing that i'm, I'm i just did three three f feature films and in every one i have this let's say cameo or or this small 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 role uh so it was like it's more it's more like a joke or you know something like that okay <laughs> yeah, like why not? And uh, why do you do it? It's just that you want to try. How is it on the other side of the camera? Or, <laughs> well, I think that every director is sort of uh, a bit actor. Or um, so, so I know, I know how 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 it uh, how it feels to be an actor on the other side. So this is more more like. Uh, for me or my family or my friends, uh, I, I pretty often try to be there somehow changed or the part is really small that you might say, did you realize that I'm there? And sometimes I think, well, I didn't. So, so they're gonna see it again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just for fun. I, I, would, yeah. I, I don't think it's, it's nothing really serious. <laughs> I have to say, I just read it in uh, one interview that you did it and I needed to go through the movie and find the part where you were. I, I didn't didn't know it before. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you have to see it again. And uh, you made a movie about wine. So are you uh, personally a wine lover or not? Or you are more beer person? <laughs> well, uh... I used to be I used to be more beer person, uh, but uh, as I'm getting older, and as I as I'm working and uh, and uh, let's say I became a friend of uh, Tomasz Witzan, who is uh, the producer of, of grapes, and he's a he's a one of the let's say best uh, uh, winemakers in in Czech Republic. So I'm. Uh, I'm more into wine, <laughs> but you know, I, I like both those drinks, um, let's say similar. So you enjoyed a shooting of the movie in Southern Moravia, you know, the wine country of the Czech Republic. Well, uh, it has a few advantages. Uh, and one of them is uh, that uh, everywhere you go, uh, Every whom you 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 meet, uh, it's always the same. I'll try this, you know, and uh, try this, and uh, you didn't try this. Oh, drink it. So so you need to uh, stop them pretty often because you wouldn't do anything uh, <laughs> instead of drinking, you know. Yeah, I would say it's pretty common in Moravia, in the Czech Republic, you know, that they are offering you one glass after another. <laughs> but 
It's nice, it's nice. And uh, I would say this, is, this, this will be my last question. Uh, what about your uh, next work? Can you reveal us if you are working on something new or? Actually, yes, uh, we uh, like uh, three, maybe just two months ago, we, we finished uh, shooting of uh, Vishehrad, the movie, which is uh, a film I, uh, I directed with uh, Jakub Stafek, who is uh, also uh, the main uh, character of this film. It's a film about the... Um, uh, about a football player, soccer soccer player, who is pretty wild, you know, and it's like a wild shot and uh, partying a lot, and and um, it it's based on a a, a short uh, series we we already did like uh, two years two years ago, and so we've decided to make a future film, and we're in a post pro uh, process. Uh, it uh, it uh, will be in cinemas, I would say, next year because of the COVID situation, but it, uh, we wanted to present it this year, but we have to postpone the, the premiere, but we're, we're sort of almost finished, and um, I think it's pretty, pretty funny, pretty cool, but unfortunately the viewers... Uh, have to wait for it for a while. Yeah. So unless we have something to looking forward to watch next time. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Martin. Thank you for the interview. And uh, I would like to also thank to our viewers. Uh, I would like to invite you to uh, other movies we have in our uh, this year's selection. And thank you for watching us. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.